Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the parable of the ten virgins. You will see that the sinner gathers foolish things along the journey of life, but that the Lord Jesus equips you with all you need to enter eternal life. Again from the parable, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. A child should never be trusted to pack their own bag for a trip. Oh, they might look prepared, adamantly claim they are, be not deceived. They do not have what they need. Sometimes that bag is literally empty, nothing inside. If it looks full, watch out. It might just be filled to the brim with Star Wars toys or one large stuffed animal crammed inside. And if a quick unzip looks to be okay on top, don't let that fool you either. Something's missing. Socks, a toothbrush. If you don't dig deep, you're foolish. And setting yourself up for disappointment miles down the road. How did you not pack any change of clothes? Now, children aren't the only ones to blame. I myself have traveled long distances only to realize upon arrival I forgot the one essential thing I needed for everything I'd planned. You yourself have grabbed the wrong item at the grocery store because the packaging looks so similar, not taking the time to read the label or inspect it carefully. And we've all suffered embarrassments worse than these with far more serious consequences. A job which looked so promising, but you weren't prepared to take on. A friend who seemed so reliable, but whose faithfulness in the end proved to be a mere outward appearance. Decisions you made in the moment, doing the best you could with the information you had, but you ended up looking the fool. Like when someone tells you you hurt them, and, and you can't fathom how you did. Or the times you know how you did. Which might hurt more. Because you thought you'd been better prepared for life than the way you acted. All of which, in light of our parable concerning the final day, all of which leads to the question, what have you been collecting for your journey into eternal life? It might look good on the outside, your bag, filled to the brim. In fact, if your funeral were held in just about any other church, It'd sound marvelous. You'd come off looking pretty good, as false teachers today tend to laud someone's personality or life's achievements at great length. You may be fairly well liked, have collected a great many accomplishments throughout your days. None of those things, though, will fit with you in the grave. No, upon honest reflection on what you've collected so far, you'll find your bag to be filled with regret, embarrassment, poor choices, people you've hurt along the way, 
And that what's missing, what's missing is the righteousness God requires to enter heaven. That one thing, the only thing he requires. Dear friends, be not deceived. Check that bag. If you don't check it now, comparing your soul against God's holy law, you'll end up looking more than a fool. Suffered embarrassment far worse than having forgotten your toothbrush. For our parable teaches that when the bridegroom returns, it's too late to turn back. The five virgins, described here as foolish, their foolishness is that they thought they were prepared. And what more, they looked prepared. They had their vessels replete with the wick, probably all polished and sparkling. So too were they dressed in all the appropriate clothes, had their hair all done up. They must have looked like they had it all. Otherwise, why wouldn't the five wise ones had said something, something, long before now. Yes, they had gone to great lengths, but lacked the one thing needed. You see, when the wise virgins begin stammering how they have no oil to spare, uh, they're not so much expressing an unwillingness to help but that they can't, that it's too late. And, and the absolute shock, how, how could you not have brought any oil? That's probably the hardest part of the Bible, so shocking for many, that God's word reveals how absolutely empty all our outward preparations are empty, meaningless. That you can look as good as you want, try as hard as you can, have others go on at length about how great you are, and you still fall short. The piercing truth that you can't even trust yourself to pack the right thing. A truth that strikes to the depth of the heart, which is true repentance. Striking so deep that it can be healed by nothing less than an answer from the depths of the heart of your God. Which your God has emptied his heart out unto all men in boundless love by giving of his son to journey among us and to do so in a way none of us could. If you took a quick glance at this Jesus, you would not think he were prepared for success in life. Proclaimed a king at his birth, yet born lowly in a manger. But this child of Mary had the one thing, that one thing we lack, righteousness. As Isaiah says, before Jesus was weaned from his mother, he knew how to refuse the evil and choose the good. 
When rumors first began to circulate that Jesus was the one of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, would come to save you from sin, death, and hell. Even one of his future disciples would doubt aloud. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Good question. How could a Galilean be prepared to accomplish the impossible? Because only Jesus' heart, its very depths, was pure. And only he could journey this life with perfection and thereby enter heaven on his own. As he said, I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. You and I might look prepared, adamantly claim we are, but be not deceived. Our preparations lead but to a journey into hell. A journey we deserve. A journey Jesus took in your place. By taking your sins as his own. And atoning for them in full. For it was his sinlessness which prepared him to go there his cross, and conquer it with success. Jesus, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. A righteous judgment and approval is what he received. When on the third day he rose again to then ascend on high. Not before, though, he had made it clear that he did it all for you. Saying, I will come again and receive you unto myself because I go and prepare a place for you. You see, Jesus, by his death and resurrection, he equips you with all you need to enter eternal life, covers you with his righteousness, makes by God's grace his perfect life yours. Dear Christians, this is no mere outward preparation. It changes, this gospel changes the very depth of your heart. For the Spirit has placed deep in your bag that one thing that makes you pure and holy in the sight of God, faith. How could you not be prepared? Don't try to pack your own bag. Empty it all before the cross of Jesus and receive from your risen Lord all you need, the forgiveness of sins. This is the oil the foolish virgins lacked. Faith in this gospel word. Trust that Christ has done it all and the confidence that in the end, the bridegroom will return for you. An oil which equips you not just for heaven, but for every day you live till you get there. As, as you journey through this earthly life, you will continue to face disappointment and loss, pain and heartbreak, the temporal consequences of your mistakes, but you overcome all that by the oil you have in store, repentance and faith, expressed in forgiveness and love for all those the Lord has placed in your life, even when, and they will, 
hurt you. You see, there is something a, a little foolish about the five wise virgins. Foolish to the world, that is. That they did not do what we parents do. They did not go digging into each other's bags to check that they had everything they needed. No, they simply embraced their neighbor as one of their own in Christian love. No, not, not foolishness. True spiritual wisdom. It is not our job to root through other people's lives, but to treat them as Christ has treated us. For only through such mercy and love do we share our oil now before it's too late. Regardless whether they receive it or not. Don't be stingy. It's an oil which can't run out. You have a boundless supply. For as you keep in God's word, you with bridal care yourselves prepare and long for that final midnight cry, the bridegroom comes awake. Until then, dear friends, until that final day, we preach the gospel keep our eyes fixed on that glorious good news in our midst. Now the peace that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.